Hello, you're listening to Abstract AF and I'm Sneha Jaswal. In this episode, we're going to look at the last chapter of the very popular fictional novel, Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. When I reviewed the book for the first time for Abstract AF in the website, someone asked me if I could explain to them what happens with the protagonist in the ending. If you are also someone who read the book but was left a little confused over the climax, maybe our explanation might help. Before we get to the ending, let's talk about the plot in a nutshell. It starts off with a 37-year-old Toru reminiscing about his college days and his first love, a girl called Naoko, who used to be the girlfriend of his best friend Kizuki. Now, Naoko has some serious mental health problems. One of the contributing factors is the fact that her childhood sweetheart and boyfriend Kizuki killed himself when they were just 17-year-olds. Toru, the protagonist, in fact, falls in love with Naoko a few years after the tragic death of his best friend. It all begins with the two of them coincidentally bumping into each other in Tokyo as college students. The two then start to meet regularly and Toru falls hard for Naoko, who sort of warns him that she will never be able to reciprocate his feelings in the same way. Soon, Naoko leaves Tokyo and checks herself into a mental health facility in a remote part of Japan. It's more on the lines of a rehabilitation center that helps patients live a regular life with a set schedule and a host of activities that they can do. With Naoko no longer in Tokyo, Toru still makes an attempt to keep in touch with her and even meets her at the institution and the two keep in constant touch through letters. He lives in the hope that Naoko would get better soon and that the two could eventually start a new life together. Meanwhile, he meets a very interesting girl studying in the same college, a girl called Midori, who takes a very keen interest in Toru for some reason. Unlike the brooding, reclusive and serious Naoko, Midori is full of life. She's outgoing, chirpy, inquisitive and very comfortable with her sexuality. Toru and Midori soon start to hang out a lot and eventually she asks Toru out. So we finally have some real conflict in the novel. Toru has to choose between the girl he has liked for years but doesn't love him back. And then there is Midori, who he really, really likes, and she likes him back more than he can imagine. So what happens in the end? In the last chapter, we see Toru dropping off Naoko's friend Riko at the station. And then he calls her Midori after waving Riko goodbye. It's almost like he's saying goodbye to the last human memory that attached him to Naoko, the girl whose favorite song was Norwegian Wood by the Beatles. I once had a girl, or should I say, she once had me. She showed me her room, isn't it good, no region room. Now to understand the ending, I'll have a friend read the last few paragraphs of the novel, which is said from Toru's perspective. I phoned Midori. I have to talk to you. I said, I have a million things to talk to you about. A million things we have to talk about. All I want in this world is you. I want to see you and talk. I want the two of us to begin everything from the beginning. Midori responded with a long, long silence. The silence of all the misty rain in the world falling on the new moon lawns of the world. Forehead pressed against the glass, I shut my eyes and waited. At last, Midori's quiet voice broke the silence. Where are you now? Where was I now? Gripping the receiver, I raised my head and turned to see what lay beyond the phone box. Where was I now? I had no idea. No idea at all. Where was this place? All that flashed into my eyes were the countless shapes of people walking by to nowhere. Again and again, I called out for Midori from the dead center of this place. That was no place. So those were the last few paragraphs of Norwegian Wood. Now, while I was reading the ending, I had no confusion whatsoever over what it meant. I simply assumed that Toru was suddenly overwhelmed with emotions. He was dazed for those few seconds after he called Midori, unable to recount where he was, because he was finally letting go of a lot of emotional baggage. He was letting go of Naoko and her memories for good by reaching out to Midori. And as he looked around in his surroundings that was teeming with busy strangers, he says people walking by to nowhere. 
because he doesn't know where they are going. So they might as well not be going anywhere in particular. Here, the metaphorical meaning could be that we are all just random living beings, living our lives with no purpose at all. For the longest time, the only purpose in Toru's life was to finish college, get a decent job, and start a life with Naoko by his side. With Naoko no more, it's like his life has lost all meaning, and only Midori can inject some color into his life again. Which is why he says, again and again, I called out for Midori from the dead center of this place. That was no place. For him, that place is lifeless. And because he could not even recall where he is, he says he was at the dead center of this place that was no place. It's like when you're at a party talking to someone insignificant and then an important person comes over to say hi and asks you, who is that? And you say, oh, no one, because they are not significant. Just like that, the place where Toru was from where he made the call wasn't significant anymore. It was no place worth recalling. Another meaning of the dead center in the sentence could be his heart. That he feels like it's empty now and the place is him, a nobody, just another young man, suffering from a heartbreak and needing some saving by another woman. Okay, maybe that's a bit harsh, but I'm sure you get the drift of what I'm trying to say. So yes, for me in the ending, I simply assumed that Toru is still at the station and he gets a little disoriented due to the emotional baggage he's dealing with and that he really did make that call to Midori. Do they finally end up together? That is a matter that's left to the reader's imagination. So that was my first conclusion when I finished reading Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. Here is another possible and even simpler explanation. Now remember, the novel starts with Toru being 37 years old, landing at the airport in Hamburg, and that's where he starts to remember his college days his life with Naoko and Midori when he was only 19, 20 years old. So in the end, when he calls up Midori and she asks where he is, some readers can perhaps interpret that he's back to reality, back to being 37 and at the airport. And for a second, he's dazed and the people walking around him are those going out of the airport. And he is trying to hold on to his past, his memories, calling out to Midori, hoping she would have reached out to him when he was lost. And this could imply that he never did get back together with Midori and continued to live a lonely life or maybe met someone else and moved on. We can only guess. I sat on a rug, biding my time, drinking her wine. We talked until two and then she said, it's time for bed. There are obviously other conclusions that other readers can draw out, but these two interpretations are the way I look at it. So that's two possible ways that the ending of Norwegian Wood can be explained. That's all for this episode. Talk to you in the next one.